Hello, this is Old School from WhatTheBuck.net, uh, reporting on the preview game for the Washington Redskins uh, matchup this week with the Buccaneers. Obviously, things are not all good in Denmark down here, figuratively speaking. Uh, the Buccaneers 0-3 going into this week uh, after getting their asses handed to them 24 to nothing by the Giants, a game in which they were incapable of uh, getting a first down to the end of the third quarter. I've already covered that in depth in the two previous videos. Uh, the destruction that was that game uh, still reverberates uh, here in Tampa. Uh, Josh Johnson is the new starter, young uh, second-year pro, fifth-round draft pick, uh, quick release, smart kid, uh, great numbers in Double uh, A, but that doesn't really necessarily translate. We don't know what he's going to do at the NFL level, but we're going to find out this week as he's our starting quarterback going into the game with the Redskins. Now the Redskins bring an interesting array of talent, despite the fact that it hasn't materialized into wins on the field uh, necessarily. They they managed to lose to Detroit, breaking their streak. That a lot of Tampa. Fans were hoping uh, Detroit would continue to get past 26, where we had set the record at 0-26. But uh, the uh, Redskins managed to let the Lions uh, creep up there and get that victory. There's a lot of talent on this Washington Redskins team on both sides of the ball. Uh, Clinton Portis, Santana Moss, Antoine randall uh, not to mention their offensive line, which has been pretty stout, uh, at least historically it has been, has plenty of individual talent. Uh, Jason Campbell, I've never been a particular, particularly a fan of Jason Campbell's, but he certainly got the physical skills. Uh, his numbers aren't uh, aren't horrible. He's 69 of 102 for 793 yards and three TDs. Uh, but the team itself hasn't sort of gelled or come together, it would appear. Now, I'm no Redskin fan, nor do I get a chance to watch them very often, so I'm not even going to claim to be an expert in them. Uh, all I can do is look at the players that they have on that squad and go, okay, on the offensive side of the ball, they got a quarterback who's capable. they got receivers who are capable. they got one of the top five to seven tight ends in the league in Chris Cooley. And they got a heck of a back in Clinton Portis. That should be a potent offense. Uh, it has not translated into a potent offense and from what I've been able to read online uh, a lot of that's being attributed to, to coach Zorn and his staff uh, for not doing a, an effective job of play calling or scheming on the defensive side of the ball this is a team who I believe was overall fourth ranked last year they go out and get Albert Hainsworth the number one free agent acquisition on the market uh, they've got a Rapco coming in here they've got thinking they're going to be able to stack that defense and that hasn't translated into the the product on the field yet either. I mean, you're talking about a team, if I can pull out my stat sheet, which of course I should have had before the video, uh, their overall ratings are certainly better than the Buccaneers uh, in every category except for two. Uh, but overall on the total defense, they're still only sitting at 15th. Uh, now, that's not what you expect when you add the kind of talent uh, that, that they added in the offseason in the form of Hainsworth. Now, Hainsworth went out with an injury last week, uh, but it looks like that's going to be a, not a serious deal. He'll be able to play this week versus the Buccaneers, and he will wreak havoc on the Buccaneers offensive line. Right now we are hurting badly at the center position with Jeff Fain still out. Sean Mahan is filling in and not doing a particularly good job. He's playing the way a second stringer would play. He's not making the kind of calls we need from a center. And to be honest, physically he's not as gifted as Jeff Fain is either. And that's really leaving the center of that line susceptible. Uh, the tackles are able to get through there. Uh, linebackers, if they're coming through the A-gap, are able to get through there. We're not able to make the calls. And that's disrupting our running game. Our running game, which which you know put up big numbers against Dallas in week one with Jeff Fain, has not been able to get untracked in the subsequent two weeks. And when the running game doesn't work, our passing game, which is predicated on the run game to go off of play action as opposed to the West Coast offense that we'd implemented when Coach Gruden was here, uh, just can't really get out of its own way. Now, uh, the Buccaneers going into this game have got to reestablish themselves. They got manhandled. Uh, in, like I said, we've covered that ad nauseum. Uh, this week they're going all pads at practice. Uh, they're trying to get back to basics. There's some shifts on the on the lineup. Adam Hayward will see more time at the linebacker spot. Uh, I know that Coach Bates and the defensive staff are trying to work their defense in. Now their defense was at a huge disadvantage last week, uh, having been on the field essentially for a game and a half because our offense was so inept. Uh, that's not necessarily to say uh, they weren't partially to blame as well, letting the Giants drive up and down the field on them. Uh, but when you have an offense like that, the worst thing you can do is allow it to get out there and control the clock. That's exactly what our offense was supposed to do. Uh, make their guys sit out in the hot sun. Now, going up to FedEx Field, uh, the climate shouldn't be an issue. Bucks are going to come in here and hopefully try and get a win. A lot of people in Tampa think this is their last legitimate shot for a win. I'm not in that camp. I think uh, with the talent that's in the NFL, any any particular day you could you can be competitive. And I think if you play good, solid, physical, fundamental football with a decent running game and decent defense, you can compete. Uh, as I mentioned before, we've only ever been able to do half of that in a particular game, and we sit at 0-3. When we look at the keys to this game uh, that I've got called, back to basics. Uh, we've got to play like, as Coach Morris said, grown men, uh, which is what he gave credit to the Giants for doing. Uh, we've got to be in your gap, know your assignment, square your shoulders, and make a tackle. Uh, stop committing stupid penalties and generate some turnovers and don't commit them. Right? It's really basic football that we've got to get back to, but when you're rebuilding, that's what it's about. You've got to start laying some bricks. 
and uh, and determine what kind of a team you're going to be. And if Coach Morris can't get this ship turned around, uh, he's going to lose control of it pretty soon because it's starting to fall apart at the seams, I believe. Uh, the offense has got to learn how to sustain drives, and we're going to have to see if this young quarterback in Josh Johnson can get that done uh, in combination, especially with the running backs that we have. All three running backs should come into this game healthy. Uh, Derek Ward was dinged up a little this week, but he should play. Our, our injured list is, is like 18 players long, but many of them are going to be able to play regardless of that. Uh, Ernest Graham will be back, but I expect Cadillac Williams to probably get the nod given his health. Uh, and I do think Cadillac can have a good day against this defense uh, with his particular running style. Um, the third key to the game is to leverage Josh Johnson's strengths. Uh, not many people know anything about Josh Johnson. There's no film on him. Uh, fact of the matter is, is the kid is quick. Uh, I think he had a 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, uh, 40 coming out of the combine. Uh, his year is the fastest quarterback time. Uh, he's a, a strong athlete, uh, and he's a very heady quarterback. He, he, he's got the mind of an older quarterback. Uh, this guy put up 43 touchdowns against one interception in his senior year. Uh, huge, just gross numbers. But again, not against, uh, you know, a Division One A competition, but still, uh, quarterback is a heady spot, right? And I, we think he can he can provide something there. Additionally, he's not Byron Leftwich in that you're not going to know where he is. The defense for Washington can't just know, hey, listen, he's going to be three, five, or seven. Uh, we know how to get there. Andre Carter coming off the edge, Hainsworth pushing up the middle, London Fletcher if he comes on a blitz. Uh, Josh isn't that guy. He's going to be able to move around in the pocket, but look downfield for the pass. But he's not going to be afraid to pull that ball down and run. And when he runs, he's going to be hard to bring down because of his speed, not because of his size. So uh, going to this game, like I said, I mentioned, I think Carnell Williams should have a big day. Uh, I'm thinking that, that Styles White should wake up as well. Uh, I think our ends have a shot. It looks like Jason Campbell's got a bit of a problem being confident stepping up in the pocket. Again, this is a conjecture on my part because I haven't seen the Redskins play other than on highlights, but from what I've read online, that seems to be an issue for Jason, and he continues to drift back. Uh, we've got ends that tend to take a little bit of an indirect route to the quarterback, which is not usually good. But if he tends to drift like that, he may actually drift right into our defense. Uh, God knows that front four has got to create some kind of pressure, and hopefully this is the week they can do that. So uh, you guys know I always pick the Bucks to win. I pick it based on them doing all the things they need to do in this particular game. If they if they do those things, if they play basic, solid football, I do think they can win. But I don't think our defense is a defense that can hold people uh, to those low scoring. I think the Redskins average 13.3 points per game. I, I think they'll get over their average this week. I think they're going to score 20. Uh, but I'm hoping that our offense can put up 24 in combination. Uh, and, and take a win, get our first victory of the year, uh, and potentially uh, put another nail in Jim Zorn's coffin. Not that I have any issue with Jim Zorn, uh, but uh, to be honest, we, we got to get a win down here, folks, in Tampa. So anyway, I hope this video was useful to you. Uh, reminder, we do a live show Mondays and Thursdays at 7 o'clock at whatthebuck.net. We talk about the Buccaneers primarily as well as the team we're playing. Uh, so we'd love to have you come over there and check it out. And uh, make sure you rate the video and let us know what you think.